Why is survival thought to be in the same boat as BM and MM? Why? Why? It's so not the same performance. So this came out while I was uh, getting my beauty sleep. So not only did we have class changes early on this week, now we have another post with massive class tuning incoming with the next reset and some nerfs, probably some more expected nerfs, likely preservation and rest restore druid nerfs. I wouldn't be too surprised, although I kind of hope that, you know, my healing spec that's probably in need of some nerfs isn't the only one that's going to get nerfed, but hey. With scheduled weekly maintenance on February the 7th, we intend to deploy a number of tuning adjustments to specializations based on their performance in endgame content. Due to the nature of our internal testing, some of these changes will also appear in the 1007 PTR between now and February the 7th. This thread is for changes that will go into live games on version 1005 next week. So this is basically next reset. Blood Decay. Heart Strike damage increased by 15%. Blood Plague buffed by 15%. Blood Boil buffed by 50%. 15. Death and Decay by 20 Shattering Bone by 5, that's nice. Sanguine Ground Damage while inside Death and Decay increased to 6%, was 5%. This is overall good. Blood Decay is historically bad at dealing damage. And so was kind of Bear, we'll see, because I see Bear there as well. And outside of like external super extraordinary power systems like the tiers that we had in the Sepulchre, oh, fundamentally the Blood Decay kit is just very poor at dealing damage. It's good at taking damage, so we have that. So we'll see. This is actually very welcome. Since we've had the recent uh, tank tier list that you might see on our channel, I have been looking at a lot of logs for Blood Decay and the damage, although it's okay, there's nothing to, to write home about specifically probably going to have a hard time keeping aggro with high with very explosive upfront dps specs that just ex just go nuts uh when when uh, when the combat starts usually in mythic plus because in raids you don't really care in raids you don't really have an issue unless it's against the other tank but that can be offset by taunting and stuff like that frost unleash friends duration increased to 10 seconds was six okay Cleaving uh, strikes obliterate now hits two additional targets oh my god obliterate is gonna hit one more target Yo, if you don't know, uh, two-handed frost decays are actually bonkers right now. And if you are not convinced, well, you first have to wait until I level my decay and you can catch it on streams on twitch.tv slash Marcellian online. Or you can also visit Bicep Pumps, which has videos on his YouTube channel playing two-handed frost decays in very high keys and doing massive damage. Two-handed, boys and girls, we finally have it. And obliterate cleaving one extra target is really good okay frost fever damage increased yes glacial advance damage increased yes frost strike damage increased by 10 percent frost well paid bumped by a hundred percent frost side damage increased by 30 percent now frost side is a contentious topic because it kind of always oscillates if it's ever good or ever bad so we never really know how good these are but these numbers are very interesting now these are the kind of buffs that you would expect underperforming classes to get did i see survival here by any chance hunter oh my god if we have survival here i'm going to lose it all right let's go let's go guardian are these the chains that were announced armor from iron 4 increased by 20 percent eh. reinforced for now increases armor from iron 4 by 15 percent was eight percent and bark skin damage reduction by 10 percent was five percent this is really really good only for the bark skin phase bear has a lot of armor melee damage is not a problem with bear obviously more armor is always good sure but likely this is not going to bring bear with where bear needs to be brought to be in tune with the other tanks we need to handle some kind of magic damage or at least increase our health pool by a lot more ursak's fury now grants an absorb shield based on 50 percent of damage dealt by thrash and maul was 30%. This is one of the things I mentioned and I called it that Earthox Fury is underpowered and needs to be buffed and it is buffed. 50% is good. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be bis considering that 30% was pretty poop when Thrash would be spammable during Incarn or Frenzy in this case depending on which Frenzy you take but now since it's not spammable anymore since it only reduces its cooldown by 50% instead of 100% that makes 30% even worse so having Ursox Fury at 50% considering you do half of the Thrashes so we can probably ballpark the number in like in like a weird way where you can think that with double the number of thrashes, 30% Orsak's Fury was not good. With half of those number of thrashes, 50% of Orsak, which is not double, is probably even worse mathematically. This is better for each individual thrash's impact, so this is something that you're probably just gonna have 
Ursox Fury is probably what you're just gonna have if you want to go for Rendon Tear. If you want to go for Rendon Tear, it might not feel as bad to have Ursox Fury, but probably Ursox Fury will still be underpowered, I believe, unless Thrash's damage is just massively increased, which I, uh, I'd be surprised. Reinvigoration, Frenzy, Regeneration, Cooldown, Reduced, Reduction, Increased to 20 to 40%, was 15 to 30%. Okay, that's good. Frenzy Regen was pretty high. This could be... If they make this more accessible, because they have tried to make it over the years with multiple buffs, we could probably, as bears, have some way to deal with magic damage in that we take it to the face and then we heal it like a like a blood decay. But for that, we need our heals to be way more reliable. Frenzy Regen needs to be off the GCD for once. Layered main chance to proc increase from 10 to 20%. This was uh, overall a very poop talent overall in terms of performance, so maybe we'll actually see this happen. Lunar Beam healing increased by 130% and cooldown reduced to one minute. This is not enough. You, as Bear, you probably don't want to take a capstone for the heal, almost ever. And usually as a tank, you probably almost never want to take it just because it gives you a lot of heal, unless it's like a stupid amount of heal. 130% is not a lot of heal because Lunar Beam's heal skills off of its damage and its damage is god-awful. This is a good step to make it more appealing but i think it definitely has to do a lot more damage because it's competing with rage of the sleeper it's competing with rays it's competing with rend and tear and rend and tear giving you dr since it's not a massive damage increase is way better than healing dr is always better than healing also we have dev uh, notes we are keeping a close eye on variances in survivability across tank specializations these changes are intended to alleviate some difficulties guardian druids have been experiencing with certain damage types as well as targeting some underperforming talents which were not delivering meaningful survivability improvements now it says certain certain damage types so it makes me sound makes me think that they think physical damage is a problem for bear and bears have massive hp bears have massive armor gains they're not really struggling with physical damage so i would hope that bears get more dr maybe make bark skin better maybe make tooth and claw better Bears are, are doing a little bit better, especially like bigger than all of this, I feel bigger than all of this is probably the Tooth and Claw fix, my opinion, because it gives 15% overall DR on a very accessible rate with a much higher uptime, probably being better as, as overall sustained, at least in Mythic Plus, than all of these, even in rates like... It could, 15% DR is probably way better than more armor. All right, restoration, all healing reduced by 3%. All right, that's fair. And preservation, all healing reduced by 5%. Okay, this is, a, this is a good start. Preservation and restoration are doing crazy numbers in raids. I'm a main preservation. I I subscribe to these nerfs. I'm ashamed because uh, I kind of like dealing high IHPS numbers. However, I feel for my fellow restoration shamans and holy paladins. And uh, I don't feel too much about priests because uh, priests are doing okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think druids and evokers are healing a little bit too much. Because I feel like sometimes I can just trivialize mechanics all by myself as a preservation, which is... It's a cool feeling to feel like you can have that much of an impact, but it's probably not ideal for the health of, of an entire raid team and the other healers. If I wasn't playing preservation and or rest or, sh rest or druid, I would probably feel pretty shitty that all of what I do is kind of like offset by the spec. However, I don't feel too shitty about preservation because preservation is not an easy healer to play. And I don't think rest of druid is an easy healer to play either. Okay, hunter. BM hunter. <laughs> damage dealt by hunter and ability is increased by five. All hunter specs get a 5% increase in damage. Why is survival thought to be in the same boat as BM and MM? Why? Why? It's so not the same performance. Why is it getting the same buff? Why isn't it 10%? Why isn't it 15%? Survival did not suffer from the same issues BM and MM. It's a, it's 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 good. Um, BM and MM getting buffs. That's actually really good, considering that they're both doing really well right now. Obviously, they're not you know boomkins and outlaws and stuff like that, but they're doing really well. And these buffs only only serve to make them better. So I think this is a good point to make in terms of like how the how Blizzard sees the meta, where before they would consistently crack down on the top DPSs in the game, trying to bring the overall community's damage lower relative to the content, relative to the raids, relative to the dungeons. But now it seems like they consistently want to bring more specs up because let's let's be honest, BM, marksmanship can clear keys easy. Survival can clear keys easy-ish, not as easy as BM and MM, but they're doing okay. They're not they're not worse. They're not holding people back, at least not in the you know the 20s, 22s, 23s, stuff like that. 
Uh, going into hierarchies, that's where survival encounters issues. So the fact that these specs are getting buffed and not left alone and instead of buffing, you know, other specs like uh, uh, Affliction Warlock, Destros, maybe in Lokis, is, is good. It's a good sign. It's a good sign that overall everybody's going to be doing way more damage. Except for, you know, the Outlaws and the Boomkins, because, uh, yeah. Mistweaver, all healing increased by 3%. Okay, Vivify healing increased by 5% specifically. Okay, Clouded Focus now increases healing and decreases mana cost by 20%, was 15. All right, so we're getting... We just we just got out of having, like, a massive list of Mistweaver buffs, and now we're getting a whole bunch more more. Peaceful Mending now increases the healing of enveloping mist and renewing mist by 25 to 50 percent was 15 to 30. Also big buff. Spinning crane kick damage increased. All right I can I can dig that. I don't I was never really impressed with Miss Weaver's DPS output which it probably should be way higher. Ancient Concordance increases the chance for rising sun kick to reset by 5 10 percent. All right. Lesson of Doubt increases healing and damage by up to 40 percent was 35. So overall buffs across the board not only into healing but also into DPS output which is really good. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that just Miss Weavers are going to slowly be put into the map. I think I think at this point, Mistweaver is probably the most addressed healer spec out of all. I have to admit, I'm not familiar with the with the situation of Mistweavers right now since I don't play my Mistweaver yet, and our guild is not running any Mistweavers at the moment. So I would have expected that Resto Shamans would probably have more of a rough spot, but Resto Shamans are not doing too shabby either. But anyway, it's good. It's good. We're getting more fixes. Protection Paladin, Avenger Shield damage increased. All right, Protection Paladin's damage is. Okay, going from probably the best DPS tank in Shadowlands to being okay, I feel like that's a blow to people's hearts, considering that Avenger Shield also doesn't generate holy power, so it's uh, part of the reason why I'm not inclined to play Protection Paladin anytime soon. Blessed Hammer, Hammer of the Righteous, Critter Strike damage increased by 30%, okay, this can definitely help single target as well. Hammer of Wrath damage increased by 50%, overall damage dealt is addressed for Paladin, which is always good for a tank. We've seen this for Blood Decay as well. It's good that we're seeing Protection Paladin as well. Holy Priest, all healing increased by 3%. That's fair enough. Holy Priest is not healing as much as Preservation and Restoration, but it's healing for quite a bit. But it's good. It's good to, it's good to know where they kind of want to see healers. And we're getting to the Shaman, which are very few changes it seems healing surge baseline healing increased by 10 percent really good and for chain healing so like i mentioned before in the past videos where we see these buffs and they're incrementally kind of small is because there are they they do want to keep people in check so they keep adding buffs so i called it guys whenever they're doing small buffs in terms of like how they're addressing clustering right now they're probably going to keep adding small buffs again and again and again and they'll stop until they feel like okay the spec is good and i think this is good so long as this happens very regularly so we don't have to wait like two months to actually have our spec perform decently in re uh, relative to the content then i guess it's fine and seeing as we're getting like so far two tuning posts in the course of one week this is pretty good all right now we have resto specific heals healing wave increased by 10 healing rain increased by 10 and overflowing shores healing increased by 10 percent this is all really good this is just baseline kit baseline spells i don't know overall how much healing this is Okay, so healing surge increased by 10%. That means 1.6% buff. So we are mega ballparking at this point right now, right? 1.6 plus healing rain was addressed too by 10%, right? Healing rain is 10% over overall plus one more. And overflowing shores is probably buffing healing rain as well, right? So maybe healing rain is getting double that. Healing rain instantly restores 40% spell power health. Oh, it's just the instant heal. Okay, this is good. But then that means it should show up here, but people don't use it, right? So this person isn't using it. So it's probably just going to be competition with acid rain, which is going to be a very steep competition in Mythic Plus. And you're probably going to take acid rain regardless, just because uh, you want the damage. You're probably always going to prioritize damage. Uh, as the Shaman Show overflowing shores doesn't really affect M plus that much. Uh, chain heal and healing wave. Where where are you? If they're being used at any point, chain heal. So 10% of this is 0.2. So overall, in a dungeon, the amount of healing that you might do as a Resto Shaman, ballparking can be in the rounds of 3% extra healing, 5% extra healing, which is very in tune with what we're seeing with other healers, which I guess it's it's okay. Um, it's 
this is not a particularly very often used spell. This is not a particularly very often used spell. However, if the builds are swapped around to something like maybe high tide, unless this person is already playing high tide, maybe chain heal can be more impactful. He's already playing high tide. Okay, so it could be better depending on how things scale, but so far that's how it's looking. And if we're going to be looking at the raids, we're gonna, probably going to look at Terras. Okay, this is like a very, very exceptional situation. It's not all rest of shamans will, will deal this amount of healing, but this is like the best case scenario, right? So for the best case scenario, we have a 10% healing rain. So that's 1.2 plus 10% uh, healing wave. So that's 0.6, right? 0.6 plus chain heal 0.3.8 plus healing surge. Oh, healing surge is hardly ever used. 0.9. Don't see them don't see him playing overflowing shores so it's around the same for raid it seems but the build is also probably different for raids you don't play high tide anymore you pry primal tech cluster and considering that probably gonna cleave a lot of healing waves maybe you're gonna cleave healing surges who knows so overall it feels like the rest of shaman buffs are pretty much the same as everybody else but instead of getting like a flat aura increase it's just getting specific spells which i probably like a little bit more because then i kind of know what the, the spells are supposed to do considering that you know not everything is as balanced you don't use everything as much warlock inquisitor's gates fell barrage damage increased by th uh, 35 percent aren't these the capsules that were like turbo nerfed inquisitor gaze no longer casts fell blast okay i thought it would only had one one ability some uh, summon soul keeper damage increased by 35 percent these have been turbo nerfed some time ago and now we also have developer notes inquisitor gaze and summon soul keeper are not contributing to the warlock's damage profile as much as we'd like after this adjustment we'll continue to watch warlock's overall performance and we will make further adjustments if needed overall 35 percent increase in damage is big in and of itself but considering that the overall damage output of both of these capsules were is pretty much abysmal the the increase is probably not that amazing but we'll see and it's good that we're getting the same treatments like if they're not performing well enough we're gonna keep buffing them which is pretty good destruction soul fire damage increased by 20 percent incinerary damage increased by 55 percent is soul fire something that you use in mythic plus i don't i don't see i don't think this person is using soul fire at all yeah soul fire is not being used at all so these buffs are whatever they buff something that's not used probably to incentivize it being used so incinerate damage also increased by 5%. I think that's probably an insignificant buff. Not really. Uh, what is 5%? It's 1% total damage. 1% total DPS increase. At least in single target. In AoE, it might be different. What? How would it be in AoE? Let's take Halls of Valor, a difficult key. The best logged Halls of Valor key. Dude, this guy pumped. Man, his party did not contribute as much. <laughs> yeah, it's not used in, uh, in AoE as well. At least not in the high keys. I mean, we can probably keep looking at logs, but this is good if they want to incentivize uh, people using Soulfire. I am not sure if these are enough buffs for this show. However, considering that Destruction probably performs very poorly in low keys, having more upfront damage and accessible damage is probably good for Destruction overall. Whether whether or not this is the damage that it actually needs uh, remains to be seen and probably main that shows no better. Demonology Weldim damage increased by 15% and Vile Fiend damage increased by 30%. I would assume that the Weldim damage also applies to Implosion. Oh, 79k on Teros with, with three power infusions? Ooh, Demo did not scale as well as other specs. Demo did not scale as well as... <laughs> Oh no, it's 96 hunters. But hey, BM hunters are getting buffed, guys. Hey. <laughs> All right, what do the buffs mean for Demo? Wild Imp, it's a 1.5% increase in damage overall just from the Wild Imps. And the Vile Fiend is very low, actually. Vile Fiend damage increased by 30%. 30% for Vile Fiend is almost a full percentage, maybe. Yes, no, it is. So you get about... So Demo Locks are getting about 2% increase in their single target. What about their AoE, though? Well, this is not a good indication of its performance with the 42%. But it did, did, this demo did the 97%. 97k. Uh, a Feral kicked it out of the park, though. So Wild Imp increases, again, about a little over 1% in, in overall damage. Why does it show twice? Okay, maybe about 1.5% in overall damage for Wild Imp. There's no file fiend here. 
<laughs> Interesting to see a world where demonology does not do AoE damage with implosion anymore. Okay. So demo buffs might actually be on par with Destros, maybe. They don't seem to be that impactful. At least where demo seems to be suffering. But I'm assuming that we're going to see more after this. We feel that both destruction and demonology could use some improvements to their overall contribution in single target situations. These adjustments are specifically targeting talents that we feel could be more competitive while also putting additional power into rotational spells. Well, okay. This is the good. The mindset is good. The mindset is good. The approach is okay. We'll see the end result. And if they don't stop here, likely demos and destros will be good in a couple of weeks' time which is all the better. But this is cool to wake up on a Saturday morning and see all of these, all of these announced for just a few days away. This is amazing, depending on when you guys see this video. It's really cool. Once again, more buffs and nerfs consistently keeping up with the meta. And we're, we're getting we're getting a lot of love, everybody. More love for survival, please. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe next time. Maybe more survival next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wild. Well. Still, I play wild. Well. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wild. Well. Still, I play wild. Well. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wild. Well.